everyone, and thank you for visiting our channel. The situation surrounding Meghan Markle's pregnancy and the birth of Archie is riddled with inconsistencies that cast doubt on the official story presented to the public. Claims from Meghan's father about her having had a hysterectomy, if true, raise serious questions about the possibility of her natural pregnancy. These doubts are compounded by allegations of Meghan using a prosthetic pregnancy bump, which some witnesses claimed appeared to slip during public appearances. Further skepticism arises from the circumstances of Archie S. birth, the non-traditional hospital choice, conflicting reports about the timing of the birth, and Harry S. confusion about Archie S. age during their first public appearance all deviate from standard royal protocols and practices. The tightly wrapped blanket in which Archie was swaddled during this appearance prevented any clear view, adding to the suspicions. The absence of any real interaction between Archie and other royal family members is another red flag. This includes the debunked photograph that falsely claimed to show the queen with Archie, which was actually manipulated to replace a pony with Archie. Additionally, the lack of public christening photos and details, which are traditionally shared in royal circles to celebrate and document such events, is unusual and suggests a deviation from royal customs possibly pointing towards more private or commercial uses of the occasion. Concerns about Archie's social upbringing, such as undisclosed details about his nursery school and the absence of information about his playdates or friendships. Further, the narrative of secrecy. This lack of visibility is not typical for royal children, whose educational and social engagements are generally part of the public record. Moreover, the mystery surrounding the disappearance of the doctor alleged to have delivered Archie, adds an element of intrigue and suspicion. The Dr. S. complete absence from any follow-up or public acknowledgement is highly unusual and contributes to the overall atmosphere of doubt and speculation regarding the true circumstances of Archie S. birth. These points collectively suggest a pattern of secrecy and manipulation of information that does not align with typical royal family practices leading to widespread public skepticism and a demand for greater transparency. Harry and Meghan S. jet-setting lifestyle, marked by their frequent travels without their children, raises eyebrows about their parenting priorities. For a couple that is so publicly vocal about their struggles and personal challenges, their actions seem to tell a different story. The children are almost invisible in their narrative, only brought up during interviews as if on cue, a stark contrast to how other royal families cherish and showcase family values. And while Harry preaches about mental health and the importance of parental presence, his own children's sporadic appearances in their parents' public life do little to convince anyone that he's living up to those principles. Instead, it paints a picture of a couple more consumed with their own image and controversies than the day-to-day -day joys and responsibilities of parenting then there's the environment the children must endure if the rumors are true about the excesses within their household. With whispers of too much alcohol and possible drug use, one can only hope that the children are insulated by nannies who are indeed super competent. Yet, how ironic and troubling is it that Harry, who so often criticizes the royal upbringing for its emotional coldness, might be creating a similarly detached environment for his own children. It seems Harry S. idea of breaking away from his parents' mistakes involves swinging the pendulum to the other extreme avoidance and a seemingly self-centered lifestyle masked by high profile. Public do-goodery. This approach hardly seems an improvement in the past. In fact, it might just be a modern, glossier version of neglect, repackaged as a quest for privacy and normalcy. What Harry and Meghan might not realize is that no amount of PR spin can mask the disconnect between their public declarations and their private contradictions, especially not from those paying close enough attention. Certainly, never pregnant, used a surrogate. Check those children S, if they do actually exist. For DNA evidence, the pregnancies are so shady that having these children in the line of succession is suspect. The queen is in denial because she has never in her ultra-sheltered life dealt with a psycho like her grandson's wife.
In this era where transparency is demanded, the clandestine nature of Megan S. alleged pregnancies only adds fuel to the fire of public skepticism. The whole affair reeks of a carefully crafted script, where the only thing thicker than the plot is the veil of secrecy that surrounds the so-called pregnancies. If using a surrogate was indeed the case, why the smoke and mirrors, unless there is something fundamentally deceptive about the way Megan wants these children perceived by the public? Indeed, if we peel back the layers of this royal soap opera, we find a narrative punctuated not by the joyful announcements of new heirs born into the Windsor family, but by whispered rumors and sidelong glances. Where are the proud paternal photographs, the candid snapshots of motherhood that the public so adores? Instead, we get controlled releases and curated glimpses, everything orchestrated like a Hollywood premiere rather than a royal family album. One must ask, if these children are indeed heirs to the historic Windsor legacy, why the need for such obfuscation? Why not celebrate their entrance into the world with the pomp and circumstance that has greeted royal births for centuries? Unless, of course, the truth is as fabricated as the set of a daytime drama, where Meghan is both director and leading lady, spinning tales that suit her narrative, while the audience, and perhaps even the queen herself, are left to puzzle over what is real and what is merely royal theater. The implications are grave, not just for the lineage and legitimacy of the royal family, but for the very fabric of the institution that relies on continuity and clarity about succession. For the queen, a monarch who has navigated decades of scandals, this must be a new low in the annals of royal challenges dealing with an actress who perhaps sees the royal family as nothing more than a stage for her performance, with airs as props in her ongoing drama. Clearly, Meghan lies about everything, including not only being pregnant once, but twice. If these two truly had children, seeing as how their popularity is in the gutter, wouldn't they be trotting the adorable cherubs out in public? Everyone loves babies. Besides, I haven't seen a good picture of Archie's face since he was a baby, so it is hard to say he favors Harry except for the red hair. Red hair is a recessive gene, so both parents would have to carry it. Archie S. hair color looked dark brown in a previous picture. None of this proves anything, but it does lead to speculation, especially given who the mother is. It seems she knows and fears that DNA tests will be done in the UK, as everybody knows she had a hysterectomy 17 years ago when she was around 30 Y.O. She can't be pregnant anymore. Loads of people know about that, including Gordon Getty, who is one of her Yacht S clients, and who said that she was sterile. As for Harry, he said he was unable to have kids due to health problems with his little jewels when he was a toddler. He even had surgeries, and doctors said that he might have sterility problems when adult. He also had an accident in the army, which furthered his chances of paternity. And if the Frounson Todger is true, that will end everything. Royals have done an investigation, and I presume that the results are out now. So now, I am looking forward to the alleged non-royal kids losing their titles and would be out of the line of succession. Harry should also be taken out of the line of succession, as well as the list of the counselors of state. Just asking if it's such a long, well-known fact that Meghan can have children, why was any of the Archie and Lilibet stuff tolerated when first advertised? Why were they not called out immediately? And this is the greatest mystery. To answer this question, maybe people are just ignoring her. She thinks she is important, but, in fact, she is so irrelevant that people let her make her lies, but they don't realize the implications of such a lie about the kids as this is criminal fraud and treason. Or she has a powerful handler, and people are afraid to talk as they are threatened. I really don't understand why, and it's frustrating. Several people were talking about it like Gordon Getty, Trevor's husband, some ex-friends, and ex-yacht escort clients of hers. Of course, Megan has no sense to me. Even if Megan is nothing, it is implicating Harry who, dumbass that he is, is still a prince of England. That lie would not be tolerated. Just wish someone could uncover the truth once and for all. Tired of the rumors. Many, many ex-friends of hers came forward about her lies about her age, as she is 47. 
not 42. Many know about her hysterectomy, but not a peep in the newspapers. Many came forward as they worked with her on yachts. Again, radio silence from the newspapers. I find it so frustrating as if everybody would have said, whoa, stop now and say the truth from the beginning. None of these frustrating moments, all this nastiness towards the royals, all those lies, all that chaos would not have happened. The ones who know and say nothing are as guilty as her. What I do find interesting is that we have only been shown a certified copy of Archie S. birth certificate, not the original. And right at the bottom, it says certificate is not proof of identity, whereas Prince George S. original birth certificate is freely shown on the internet and there is no such warning on the bottom, as there isn't on my UK birth certificate. So why has the original never been shown if that of the second in line to the throne, S. birth certificate, is available for all to see? Why not Archie S.? Maybe partially politics, especially in the U.S. Meghan and Harry have an agenda. The media may be going along right now for entertainment purposes. Financial gain in selling this topic, as well as having a go to couple on slow newsworthy days. But to be honest, it's only a well-known fact in the heads of deranged loons who invent any story that pops up in their fevered imagination. If all these strange, nasty stories had any truth, you can bet the world press would plaster it on every front page and the story seller would have been paid handsomely for the story. Funny how not one of these loons has managed to sell one of these stories, isn't it? If Megan had a child years ago that she gave up, I'm sure somebody would have come forward with the story. The paparazzi are very good at digging deep when they want a story. We have to get them out. All these lies and these children, do they have any? And are they royal or not? It is time the public knew the truth about these two. It has gone on long enough. Enough is enough. We are sick of hearing about them. Whatever the truth is about these children, Harry and Meghan made the decision that royal life and duties weren't for them. And so, it makes no sense that they are still in the line of succession and still using titles. They should put their money where their mouth is and live the life of ordinary citizens. You know, she can have 20 kids with a surrogate if she wants, and nobody would give a damn. It is the continuous lies, the fake pregnancies, the conniving around that, the fraud. There is the problem. If she had said that they used a surrogate, not making that idiotic show with the moon bump, the renting kids, the show, and the super photoshopped pictures, people would have accepted it. But she lied. She fraud the monarchy because she wanted to have all the royal gizmos and money and titles, but was and still is too dumb to realize that the royals would ask for the real official papers, the witness signatures, the real name of the real doctors who allegedly birthed her. As for the moment, all the doctors she named were absent of the hospitals and claimed they never ever saw her. You need not be a genius to figure out Meghan and Harry S. deceitful acts. How do you expect a woman who had a hysterectomy to conceive? Meghan gave away her lies showing in very fake-looking moon bumps. Not once, but twice. Let us see Meggie for the third time parading proudly in fake moon bumps. What a comedy acts! In tradition, I think she showed the fake moon bump more than three times. Guess she didn't have any idea that all of her lies would come back to bite her in the rump. The bump going into the cathedral looked totally different position to when she came out and was standing in the steps. It looked decidedly odd as it was extremely low and over to one side. In fact, they are both deluded individuals that think they can pull anything off and then get out of whatever they have lied about by calling it their truth. She even used this excuse in court and when she was caught out, had to apologize. She should have been done for perjury, but insisted it was her truth, her version of how she saw the situation. Can you imagine the rest of us doing that? Meghan Markle revealed her pregnancy in October 2018 while on tour in Australia, likely to explain why some of her clothing didn't fit. Instead of body shaming, she explained her boxier frame, even though she was very early in her pregnancy. Because she has a short torso, several of the items didn't fit her anymore because she was gaining weight swiftly. There was little room for weight. It was becoming clearer quickly. They probably wanted to be prepared in case she was sick one day. 
They made this big announcement, and conspiracies started instantly. We first heard accusations that Megan was bullying her staff around this time. Her personal helper also left about this time. Some of these tales about the bridesmaid S catastrophe and Megan S wants and needs came out around this time. Megan cupped her pseudo non-existent buttocks, which drove many people insane during the trip. She gained weight, although it looked like she had a big lunch. No bump bump was there. She had a food baby. That was the general appearance. People were startled and put off by her overly demonstrative pregnancy. They even had a photo of her standing in the woodland, caressing her bump. Yes, I understand. It was cute. However, it could have been better amongst a couple or family members rather than in public. Because she was pregnant early again. Not there. As if she were cupping air. She did this throughout her pregnancy. She kept stroking and cupping it. To get the greatest photo of the bump at the British Fashion Awards, she flicked her coat back with both hands. I guess this fueled pregnancy rumors again. People said the bump moved as she kneeled down. That may be normal throughout pregnancy. I think Megan was so focused on her tummy that many wondered, is she doing something over there? Because it resembled a magic trick. Look at my belly. Ignore the surrogate elsewhere. Probably not. It merely shows Harry and Megan S. image of micromanagement. It kept fueling this. They also said they wouldn't reveal where or who will give birth. It could be midwives or doctors. She denied the Queenus doctor's help. The best in the nation. So many people are questioning what happened. This suspicion was heightened again. Harry and Meghan have also contributed to popular mistrust by making deceptive claims. Early in their royal career, it's harder to see. However, Meghan stated, I don't know anything about the royals, and I didn't Google Harry. Just wondering if he was friendly? You could feel the world roll its eyes and say, Are you kidding me? Not that she shouldn't have gotten to know him, but it was stupid for her to state. I just want to know if he's nice. He's a royal, so no. You don't want to know how his princehood benefits you. That was foolish of her to say. Again, people lacked trust. Back at the wedding, only her mother was there from her family. No childhood pals attended. IV moved a lot. I am not as close with some of my childhood friends as I would be if I still lived in the same place. But we still talk from time to time. You wonder why Megan S. every relationship since college has fallen apart. After it went apart, she had only Jessica Mulroney as friends and no relatives. No uncles, aunts, nephews, nieces, nothing. And she did, naturally. Many people mentioned her terrible family. I also thought this was accurate when Lady Colin Campbell claimed that the Markles were humiliated in her book. She humiliated her family internationally by denying them royal wedding tickets. There were tidbits before then, but that created a lot of resentment. Another reference to Megan S. activities. She should have invited her family and called it quits. They may have attended their religious ceremony instead of the celebration. There were various ways she could have incorporated her family in her wedding. She declined, raising questions about her character. The coat dress she wore to Eugenie S. wedding with the last two buttons undone was meant to imply she was pregnant. Meghan and Harry loved theater and drama. As the pregnancy progressed, they said, We want him private. We can he tell you anything. But please listen. It rubbed people the wrong way and made them doubt their intentions and actions. Which was interesting. When Meghan gave birth to Archie, the easel had little information. We don't know anything about the doctors involved because we can invade baby Archie S. Privacy, who is seventh in line for the throne. Not third like George, but seventh. Just looking at that makes you wonder what happened. Harry and Meghan also tried to frustrate the media with their son S. Birth. The media said that the senior royal had given birth in the morning, as is typical for senior jobs. Since they advertised this to avoid traffic accidents and travelers, they probably were at the hospital by then. That makes sense. They want to announce it when Catherine is in the hospital. They announced her labor to make sure she was in the hospital. Nobody was trying to find her in London and metal. Megan made this declaration, and an hour later, it was revealed that she had given birth two hours earlier. Richard Palmer stated something fascinating in a recent BBC documentary that was against the royals and mildly pro Harry and Meghan. 
He stated they purposely made the British media look foolish, and they did. However, Harry and Meghan and the press have had a tense relationship from the outset. After Harry and Meghan started dating, Harry made a big announcement attacking the media, stating they were all racist. So, rock star all the way, Meghan, Harry, and Archie stood still when Meghan stepped out. Harry wasn't a moving, and they didn't offer the press a decent photo of him holding Archie. She's hurt her own children by attempting to build a zoo, speculating about their births, and keeping them private, which is not private. Everything creates a lot of questions. As a Harry and Meghan would refuse to show him. He was ultimately showcased in South Africa. It was a display, and she simply went to the polo competition. Again, people were puzzled since she didn't tease. It was stiff. She held him. It looked strange. You couldn't help but compare her to Catherine. Catherine is playing with baby Louis, who is kissing her and trying on eyeglasses. Meghan ignores Louis. Louis watches her. People wonder about this and this baby. Fueling this continues. Even the U.S. has it. When she was pregnant with Lilibet, some worried that she was surrogate again. Since Meghan is young, I don't know for sure. Again, many women do this. Maybe for their second child. I don't know for their first. They chose a boy embryo via IVF. They chose a girl embryo for the second. You can accomplish that with IVF. I doubt they employed a surrogate. It's illegal to pay a UK surrogate for several reasons. Your surrogate must volunteer. Not so in the US. They could have flown a surrogate from the US to London to give birth, but that's complicated. I know Megan S. Bump's move. I forgot to mention. I think sometimes I wonder. Do not know this for sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if she pads her bump to make it more pronounced because she wasn't a gaining weight in the right places. And she didn't like how something looked and wanted it to look this way and that way. That s possible, but I assume she was pregnant. Again, UK surrogacy rules are tight, so it must be a volunteer. That may be easy since they re royals, or they could fly someone from the U.S. But it's complicated. I found Ukraine interesting too. Well, that s all for today s video. Thank you very much for watching our video, and I want to know what you think about these issues. Please express your opinion in the comments below. Hope you will always be cheerful and happy. Don't forget to support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. Goodbye, and see you again in the next videos.